Hello everybody and welcome once again to All The Mods 4. This episode we're going to have a look at developing programs for the drone from Pneumatic Craft Repressurized. So let's get started. So we're going to do this in several ways. First of all we're going to open up the here and we're going to set up small, create a little program in order to be able to change the program very easily. And what we need for this is an, a network API. We'll have a look at that in a second. But first let's just create this program. So you want to you always need to start whatever you do you need to start and we also need one of these called run external program which is a purple one that looks like this external program you link it together like that and this needs an area and the area it needs so we'll get an area piece this one here is um like that and we'll also put on here a standby now the area this needs is the area where the um, network API is going to be stored. And in this case we are going to store it in the program itself. So we take um we take a, a GPS tool, we've got one here like this, and we shift a uh, shift left click this all, just right click it on here like this, try a shift no shift. So it sets the coordinates. It was already set as it happens. So we're testing it of course. So what we can then do is we can take this one here, we can right click this and it opens up here and then you can select point one and it highlights the GPS tools you've got here so you can do that one or you can select point two like this and that's also done so it's actually set the, the box area so this is now good and it's good to go so we program the drone with this what happened <laughs> how do I get 16 bookies man let's just shift click it in there it is a bit strange sometimes the uh, Let's just shift click it into here again. Where's it gone to? There. And so then you can write the program here by pressing this button here like this. Export the program to the drone. So this has now got some programming pieces in it. Now the programming pieces in my case are being stored in here. And I've got had 32. So it's used the four programming pieces. So what we can now do is put this drone down. And we'll start a little program on it. Let's just put it down here like this. But and that'll sort of drop off. And while actually, while that's, it should go to standby. It might already be. So what we're also going to do over here is we're going to just create another little GPS tool. The recipe for these ones is just this. So four pieces of plastic, one redstone, one diamond, a pane of glass, and uh, that's it. Sheets of plastic, that's it. So, and then what we can do with these two GPS tools, we can actually put them together and make an area tool, which is very handy. It's actually saved a lot of work, especially with the programmer like this. In fact that hasn't gone to standby. So the first thing we're going to do is, oh well, there are some more things we're going to do, but we're going to put these here. A coordinate tracker, a block tracker and an entity tracker. Entity tracker. I think we don't need the block tracker, but we need the entity tracker. And we're going to put those into the helmet of the uh, pneumatic craft armor. So let's start this program first of all. So that's done. We don't need this program anymore. We can get rid of that. So we can delete it. Like that. so it's fun. And you can put the net network API in here, like that. And then we can program it. So we'll start, we'll do a start. We'll do an um, a go to position. So we, if you're not sure where they are, just click this button here and you say go to. And then it'll highlight here a go to location block down this. And we put this down like that. And this one will need an area. So let's go and take an area here like this. So it's going to go to a location. Uh, and then we'll put a we'll put a standby at the bottom of this just to this one here to finish it off. And then this needs the area. So what we're going to do is this, oops, sorry. Let's just take this and just press an area we want to go to. I would like it to go to on top of here, for instance. No, I don't want it to go in the middle of it. I would like it to go on top of it. So to do that, you need to put a, a pseudo block on top of it. And then we've got uh, my favourite ones, of course, are the uh, slime blocks they're easy to break so I wanted to go here and then I can take the tool and shift left click on right click on and left click it and it says shift left and shift right sets the position to that particular block so we can then break this block like that get it back again so that's the location we're going to go to and what you can then do as long as you come into the program here 
just take this EPS tool here and then left click that and that sets the area. You can also left click this and it will set a, a new area. Uh, puts the area piece down for you. So we could, for example, delete this one, delete this one like that. And then because it's going to complain about that, just take the area tool now and just drop it beside here like that. And it automatically didn't actually connect up, but now it's connected. So we can then program this into here. And as soon as we do that, the drone is going to move. So, so we can see it. Let's just put another piece in here. Let's just have a sleep. There's a block here to sleep for or wait. I think it's called wait actually. Yes, there we go. And then that's going to need a time. Now this time you can press I on here. There's a bing bug being fixed here. So 20 ticks is one second. Or we can type in, yeah, we'll just time in, leave it for a second, we'll probably be able to see it in that time. So let's just put the time in here. So you need a text piece in here to do that. You see the patterns match up here. And you want a text value. And what we want to put in this text value, we right click it and we'll say, um, let's say four, 40, that's two seconds. Or you can type two seconds, whichever you prefer, like that. Let me program this into here like this. Press escape. When you have two seconds time, this drone should just move along to that on top of there, like that. So we don't have to go and grab the drone and reprogram it all the time. This is what this is all about. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go, and I'm going to have a quick sleep and back in a second. I'm going to go over here and put it, uh, put it into the charging station. Um, how's my armor doing? It should actually be charged up, and I think I've done this wrong. Because I've set up an aerial interface in here with power. We'll come to that another day, I think. So let's just take this into here and then put the helmet into the into here, so we can then it'll actually charge it up if it was there. Always stand on it, and then we can put into this helmet some upgrades. So the one we want to do is range upgrade. I, does it tell us maximum range? So that tells you where the entity tracker will can operate so you can increase it by five blocks also increases the air usage or each upgrade increases it by five blocks so we probably do want a couple of those now the one we're actually interested in at the moment is the coordinate tracker um, so I think it also applies to drones not 100% sure. Let's just put the entity tracker in here like that. And then get this out of here like this. And then put it back on that helmet. And you'll see it's charging up all the settings, as you can see. If you just stand on here a few seconds, it'll charge up my armor. So what we wanted to do is now to see if we can actually activate that. So the control was control U, I think I've set up for this one. So we have to debugging drones. So we need to control. Uh, okay, I, I changed the programming on this one. So it's control and this will actually allow it to work. So what you do then is you control and left bracket. Um, hasn't actually worked. Or has it? Let's do that again. Control U. Oh yes, it has worked. It didn't normally show us a message. I'm pretty sure I need something else in there, but I've forgotten which one it is. Oh, the entity tracker. We need the entity tracker on as well. And it's set up to this one. And I've set that one to the control in the other bracket. So control and right bracket here enables the entity tracker. And when that's enabled, it uses up air at a reasonable rate as it happens. That's why I set up the other one. But never mind, we'll, we'll cope with that. So here we have a drone, and it's telling me that the health of this drone is 100%. And it's actually running this program. You see here it's going main, main. Uh, and if we press um, control left arrow key, it should be in debug mode in here. Okay, that's actually quite handy. This was that last time I did this, it wasn't, it wasn't showing the text here. But anyway, that's not too important. I'm, I'm a bit hesitant because I put a load of other upgrades in here the last time, so like this. So now we've got this program running, we're going to change it. 
Um, I'm going to take my entity tracker off first of all because we don't want to use all the air in the helmet. In fact, what happens when you do use all the air, air in the helmet? It's a bit strange. So what I want to do now is I'll leave the weight in here. Maybe we'll move it out. Now what we want to do is we want to go to an inventory and take an item. So what we, but we also want to, at the same time is to put an item into that inventory. So the first thing we then have to do is a condition. So here we have import from inventory, export items from inventory. Let's take these two out of here like this. Orange and blue. Orange and blue are the colors for that anyway. So let's have a look at this. We can also do conditions. You'll see I've set this to medium rather than advanced. And here are the conditions. So this one here is items and this is it says items of the actually it's items of the drone and i think this i don't know this is a drone conditions that's right this is items so i'll take an items one in here um and what we want to find out is whether or not a particular place has has actually got a um a bucket of plastic that's filled up what we want to do is we want to actually change this program so i'm going to take from here uh, this is a, an auto clicker and it's set to right here and what it's doing is it'll right click this with a and that with a bucket and then that bucket's going to get filled up and we get a bucket of plastic and the idea is then to take this bucket of plastic and put it into this chest here so it gets made into plastic sheets that's what i'm trying to do so let's see if we can actually do that in this episode if not, I'll just come back towards the end and do the finished program because there's bound to be tweaks. Um, here I've got a chest with some, actually I've got some buckets in here already. That's right. I don't think I need those. The reason I set it in here, I was trying different things. I was trying a hopper, but if you put a hopper it, it takes the bucket out. So it doesn't work as you would hope it to work. So for example, if we put a bucket in, we've got some buckets in here. Let's, Let's put these buckets into this chest in here like this. So we've got 17 buckets in this chest. So we want to come along here and take a bucket out and put it into here. That's the first thing. And then when it's been a bucket of plastic, we want to take the bucket of plastic out and put it back into here. So what we do to do that, let's come back to the programmer. Now we know what we're trying to achieve. So the first thing we need to do is we want to come along here and say, if there is a bucket of plastic in this chest we take it out so this is the condition first of all so what we need is we need an area piece and the area we want to do is the is the actual box itself so let's get the area tool out again like this and at the moment it shows you where, where it's actually going to so let, this time we need to change it to the middle of this so we can shift right click and left click and it's in here the area in this case is just one piece so the one we want then is this location here. Okay. The next thing it needs is it needs an item. So we need to get a bucket, an item filter, which is this one here. Oops, why didn't that join in? <laughs> Try again. That's a bit strange. Try it away again. Try again. It, have I done the right piece? I'm sure I have. <laughs> okay. Maybe I need to put that on the other side, actually. Let's try it on the other side here. Yeah, okay. So this, this time we need to right-click this and we say a bucket. So we need a bucket of molten plastic. We've got two choices. We can search our inventory if we've got a bucket of molten pl plastic in it. We could just search for an item. So we can say plastic. And here we have our bucket of molten plastic here. We can click that. So that's now there, and it's basically the only thing it can do. So it's got a bucket of molten plastic in it. So if it has got a bucket of molten plastic, what we want it to do, and this is where we have to go jumps. This isn't the easiest program to start with, but I'm going to just, I've done those before. So what we need is a go to. Um, so we need blocks to come down here. Oh, it's text labels, isn't it? Yeah, and we need text labels. So on the right-hand side of this, it's the 
at true side it'll tell you here if we right if we press info on this block so it tells us here the condition item is checks an inventory to contain certain items it will count all the matching items and omit it into the filter unfortunately it doesn't say what the connectors do at this at this point in time never mind so what we need to say and then we'll say what we say will has we'll say has has plastic like that could say has plastic bucket but it just has plastic will do for the time being so that's now I've got this label and what we can then do is middle click this and drag it over here to this one over here and then that links in so it says if this is true it comes to this place here so what we're going to do now is we're now going to take tell it to go and pick up this bucket of lava plastic I should also change here the number right click this and say we don't care which side it's being accessed from and we actually need it to be equal to one or greater than equal to one's fine I think okay so that should then come through here and then what we're going to do is we're going to set import from the inventory here like this so the inventory is the same one as we've just checked so we can middle click this and drag it across here like that and then we're going to middle click this bucket of plastic out of here and put it on the right hand side here like this so then it's going to pick up that bucket so the next thing it's going to do is it's going to take this bucket and export it to an inventory so we're going to take this this bucket here and we're going to export this to it into this chest here so we need the GPS tool again like this so we need to shift left and right click you see that's the, some of the area by the way and this time we're just dealing with single point inventory so we don't really care could use the GPS tool as I just did but this is easier so we go to this area this this place here now left click that I think that's on yeah and then we're going to export our inventory into this into this chest okay it hasn't got a plastic bucket in at the moment but what we are going to do is turn this on you'll notice here I've got all of these flow detector modules in here um, it yes it is working the reason for that is I was curious to see which of these is actually running and you'll see that I've actually got this set up after that so this should now have a pressure in here of one bar because I set it to being lower was it was one bar so when it's off it's one bar and when it's on it's zero bar so it turns it off if you see what I mean so it behaves the same way right it's night time again I'll be back in a second and as you see this is going bluer and bluer so it's cooling down in fact it tells you here on the heat frame it's cooling down so that might be cold enough now for it to work properly so what we're going to do is we're going to put one bucket into here uh, I've got buckets in here haven't I? let's just take one bucket where have I put the buckets oh they're, they're in here aren't they let's take a bucket out of here and then put one bucket into here like this and it should fill up now this has got set up to 500 ticks now 506 is 25 seconds so maybe that's a bit too let's set it to what all right it's done it already so now it's got a bucket of plastic in here so this drone if the program's working we haven't changed the program yet because we haven't clicked this button so before we do that let's just bring this down a little bit and put the weight in at the top here again that should have moved with it why didn't it move with it uh, putting the weight in here like this so we just wait at two seconds when we so we can see what's going on and do that then we program it and have a look so two seconds of time it should pick this up uh, a, a check it doesn't seem to be working so what we do is we can then enable debugging again so let's do the entity tracking here and in fact at the moment it's just doing drone let's come along to this drone here it's actually hard to say but and then control the other one so it's now doing this so it's just telling me it's doing through the main let's have a look at this program 
I seem to remember this working slightly differently before. Let's just try that again. And do check it disabled. Right, now it's debugging the drone. You see it's gone the red it's got the red border on it. But it's not helping me very much because it's just saying it's doing going to main. <laughs> what's it not doing as plastic now what we need to do is to find out whether this is actually how it's working so let's let's do something different check in here we've got some pieces because there's only one programming puzzle piece in this version of the mod and let's give it a let's do something like a set a label or set a sign um, there's a, one of the widgets here is to set a sign and I th remember it's this one, edit sign here like this. So what we can do with this is we can tell it to edit a sign and give it a location. So if it's true here, let's move these blocks down here like that. And then if this is true, we're going to edit the sign and we're going to say the sign is, has got a bucket of plastic on it. If it's false, we're going to do that loop as well. We haven't done that one yet. If I run out of puzzle pieces, we'll just make some more. Okay. Um, I wonder if I've done this wrong. It will actually drop down to here if we haven't. If it doesn't go through this loop, so it should just go through this loop and drop down for here. So let's just try that. So we can edit the sign piece again here. And we'll say, uh, we'll say it's false in this case no error is specified so we need to edit the sign i'll just come back in a second with two signs see in a second right i made some signs so i'm just going to put a sign down here um i'm only going to put one down and we're not going to label it so we can see it so what we're going to do now is we're going to change the pro modify the program we need the gps tool here and i need to label this so I want this position here, so let's sh shift left and right click this particular sign and we come along here like this and then we change the sign. So we've now got the position of the sign. We're going to use the same position so we get the text will be updated. In fact it doesn't look as though that's actually joined into the onto the into the into the puzzle or, or into the program. See when it does it it changes the text. So we need two text labels now, one where it says has, so in this case we have a plastic bucket, so let's say has okay and this one we're going to do, I'm going to duplicate this actually in middle, middle click it of course and do a duplicate it, put it in, in here We'll just change the text because we can change the text easily. So, to no plastic bucket. And then we need to program the uh, network API. So, it's now running and it says there's no plastic bucket in here. Now we know there is a plastic bucket in here because we've got one. Buc but bucket of molten plastic. Now, actually, I know what the problem is here. This is actually on the wrong side. If you remember last time I was trying to put it on here, it wouldn't let me put it on, but now it does. So let's just click this in here and see what happens. So we've got the two seconds, and then that should then change for has plastic. So over it goes, and it drops the bucket into here. So we've now got some plastic sheets in here. Fantastic. So the next thing we're going to do is when we're going to come back here, and we're going to do the false route of this. So it doesn't have a plastic bucket. So the false route here is this side. As it happens, we can take it out of this side. So let's take the true, put it over the right side here, and let's do a false route. So it hasn't got a plastic bucket. So what we want to do now um, has plastic. Yes, exactly. So the false route here is we're going to link it in from here. So we need a new label. So what we're going to say on this label is we're going to say no plastic. Oh. So 
no plastic bucket here like that so you can see that's this route and we're going to just simply drag this across to here like that and then it should come across here now there is another way to do that which might be better and that's to use the jump the jump one so we have a, a jump here jump so at the bottom of this we could put the jump here and we could then move this label from here down to here like this and then it links into this one we can get rid of this one as it happens and that drops that link out so it's got no plastic bucket so it comes over here so what we're going to do then is we're going to take uh, two more inventory items we're going to take we want to take the uh, export from an item we're going to because we've already know we've got a bucket in there so we're going to take the bucket and we're going to empty bucket out of here and then we're going to take the, the other one is we're going to export this into this chest here and I'll import from it's got them the wrong way around I this way around So what we're going to do here is we're going to put the bucket into the into the into the auto clicker and we're going to take it out of the chest here. So I need to set up those two locations again. I don't actually need to do that because we already know where they are. So here we've got an item filter. We need the item filter again, of course. So we need the item filter on this side. And then we right click that and what we want is a maybe I've got one in my inventory. No, I haven't. We've got a bat flying around. Let's just take one from here. Aha. Uh -huh. You see what's just happened then? It's just turned off. You, and what has actually happened is I've run out of air. So, so I just stand on here for a few seconds. And I should get the, the pressure coming all the way back up again. It doesn't take very long. Um, and I'll have to fix the uh, aerial interface between episodes. <laughs> so what we want to do is let's just say... Uh, let's just take that as a destination so let's get that back in the hand again so we want to basically take this one and this is where we're going to put the bucket into uh, I know I'm doing this a bit wrong so we're going to put it into this one over here like this and we're going to say a bucket in here did I pick up a bu bucket yes I did good so we have an empty bucket in here and we're going to come along here and we're going to tell this one we only want one item use an item count of one because we don't need to take more than one out because we can only auto click one at a time so that's that one so the only other thing i have to do now is to to get the position of this so we are putting it into here so this is where it drops it in so this is where we're going to take the bucket out of middle drag it across and that should now work so let's have a look. Um, quick check. Let's see that everything's set up correctly. So we've got nothing in here. And let's just change this to, I'll leave it at 200, 200 ticks. That's 10 seconds. And that's five seconds. That's two and a half seconds. Yeah, we'll do it, we'll do it for five seconds, okay? Now this is nice and cold. And it's got buckets and plastic in there, fantastic. So this time, all we're going to do is we are going to. Um, that's all we have to do, I think. Let's just let's just program it. So now it's gone off, and it should be here. It should have taken out of here the bucket, and it hasn't done. Why hasn't it done? We'll make sure we've got the right location to start with. So that's that one. Now what's this sign telling us? No plastic bucket, that's correct. So no plastic bucket means it's gone here. So it should be importing from inventory a bucket here. We've got an empty bucket. Use item count one and preview area yes that seems to be the correct location just double check it let's just take this here and then simply left click this now oh, it's the right location 
but maybe I don't maybe this isn't working properly because I've got this let's just do this let's put this back onto here like that and then drop that piece away so we actually don't know but then we won't see whether we've got the bucket or not um, yeah that's just the label isn't it so what we can say is we can say we'll put we'll change and we'll put a new label in here let's do that so we want another edit sign oh I wonder if actually I've got enough pieces that I do need to check so let's have a quick look in here and we've got five pieces left so that's fine so what we're going to type put some text in here now we've used going to use another three pieces so the text we're going to put in this one is we're going to say um collect bucket if I ever managed to type things in right and then we just need to specify the, the location of the sign which is this one of course like that so that should do let's just program up this and it's just going off why is it going off <laughs> Tell you what, I shall be back in a second. I know what the problem is. I've actually changed the program a bit. Um, when I press this start, that it goes. I didn't work this time. Ah, because it took it for my inventory. I hadn't got enough programming pieces, um, so I did some more. I should have put that somewhere else. Um, and when it makes that brrr sound, that I, it tells you here it said required 14 more. So that should now work. So we've got the the drone in here. It hasn't got any plastic in it. Where's the drone gone to? Can't see it. Have I cut it on my? I probably picked it up. Yes, I did. Look. Let's put it down this time and let's see what it does. So now it should take two seconds and it should move and check. So it says it has got plastic. So there we go. So it's picked up the bucket of plastic and it's put it into here. And we've got three sheets. It's taken the bucket back again and it's going to put it in here. Now, it, this time it's going to wait here. I hope it's going to wait for 10 seconds. We shall see. Because um, I put in a delay because it's going too fast. This needs to cool down before it puts the bucket in here. So let's just see what it's doing. So it has got the plastic. So we've now got this in here. We've, I changed the speed to every 100 clicks. In fact, let's put it back again to this one. So every five seconds it'll be. Every 200 texts, uh, it's, no, 10 seconds. So it's going to wait there. It will. So that's doing what? Well, it seems to be working. Look, we've got some more plastic in here. It's just got two more. Let's just drop the other one in. And then it's going to wait. And there we go. See, it's, it's taking the bucket out of here, as you'll see. It's got the delay on it at the moment. I probably don't need the delay here. Should have taken it out. Tell you what, let's just fix that quickly, and then we can call it a day. So one of the things I did is I put a delay in here of five seconds. I don't need that in here. Let's just remove this delay here, put it back up again like that just delete this piece just throw them off the side there and then program it up again and let's have a look so that's got a bucket of molten plastic it should have taken it ah you know what's happening oh now it's empty so it's now taking it good so it should come back and put an empty bucket in there fantastic and that should take five seconds 10 seconds for it to actually do the business let's put two in have I got something wrong with my program I think I have it's also night time again night times are coming extremely fast so let's have a look let's make sure that we're only use, use count one here importing molten buckets from here and also do it on here yes that's already set up okay let's program that in and see if it's lows down how much have we got 
10 pieces of plastic from five buckets. It seems to be taking buckets from the same place for each time. That's fine. So here this one should take, f it's got five buckets, six buckets in it. So it's got six buckets in. Um, it seems to be putting in buckets all the time. There it goes. Oh, there. <laughs> and the bucket's sitting on the top. But it did pick that bucket up. You see? And I picked it up that time. So, I think I might have got something wrong, but it looks like it's working. Well, there's one easy fix to this, and I'll do that between episodes. We'll just put one bucket in the whole system, and it's only got one bucket at the moment. It's, it's not behaving quite correctly. Anyway, until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.